In this video, we will cover recognizing family creation best practices and creating parametric geometry and connectors. To create a new family, click the File tab and then select New Family. In the New Family Select Template File dialog, you can select the template you want to use to begin your family. For this example, select Electrical Equipment and then click Open. To create a parametric family, there are some best practices you should follow. This includes starting the family by creating the framework with reference planes and then adding dimensions to control the reference planes. After that, you can label the dimensions and then create geometry and constrain it to the reference planes. This will be the start of a parametric family. For this example, we'll begin by creating a box that we can then use as a transformer. We'll begin by creating the framework with reference planes. On the Create ribbon, in the Datum panel, click Reference Plane. I'll click to place two points to define a left reference plane. Then I'll create a right reference plane. And then we'll create a front and a back reference plane. Then I'll click Modify. When you select a reference plane, you can give it a name. I'll name this one left, and then you can control the is reference value. And this determines the priority of dimensioning it in a project. I'll select this one to left. If this was a, a weak reference, then it would have a lower priority in the project. And if it was not a reference, then you wouldn't be able to dimension to it. In other words, you wouldn't be able to snap a dimension to it in the project. So I'll select left, and then for this one I'll select right. And also when you name it, you will get a tooltip that will show its name in the project when you're dimensioning to it. And so that's a good reason to name it. It also just helps to keep things organized so that other people that may be looking at your family will know what you're trying to do here. Alright, so we have front, back, left, right, and then we also have center left, right, and center front, back reference planes that are created and pinned by default. Also note that defines origin is selected for the two that are created by default, and the intersection of the reference planes that are set to defines origin will be the insertion point for the family. So if you wanted to change that to a corner, you could select defines origin for one of the other reference planes. Next, I'll switch to the front elevation view and create one more reference plane. There's that extension line. Now, the next thing we'll do is add dimensions. So on the annotate ribbon in the dimension panel, I'll click aligned dimension. And then I'm going to place a string here between all these and then click the EQ to create an equality constraint. And then I'll create an overall dimension. And so what this will do is it'll keep the left and right and then front and back reference planes. It'll keep those at an equidistance away from the center so that we can keep our spacing nice and neat. And then we'll create one more dimension and then click Modify. Next we want to create parameters so that we can label the dimensions with the parameters. And what we can do is we can go to the Family Types dialog and the Family Types button is available on the Modify ribbon and on the Create ribbon. And in this dialog, we can create types and then we can also add parameters. You can see that there are several parameters that are created by default. And these are added to the template 
that we used and so that's why uh, that's why they appear here is because we started using the electrical equipment template I'll click new parameter and then we will create parameters for the length the width and the height and one more for the height and I'll click OK and we'll use a value of five feet to get us going and I'll click OK. Now when I select a dimension you can see that there is a label dimension panel on the contextual ribbon with the label drop down. Since I have a length dimension selected any of the applicable dimensions that I can use to drive this dimension will be available. So in this case, I'll select length, and for the other one, I'll select width. And then in the front view, I'll select the dimension and label it with the height parameter. Now at this point, we have parameters that are driving our reference planes, and so we can now create geometry and then constrain it to the reference planes. On the Create ribbon in the Forms panel, click Extrusion. And then in the Draw Gallery, select Rectangle. And we'll snap to two corners of our reference planes. And then after the sketch line is placed, you'll notice the padlock icons. I can click those padlocks to constrain the sketch line to the reference plane. And this takes care of our 2D sketch. And I'll click Finish Edit Mode. And there's still a height parameter that we need to account for. So with the extrusion selected, I'll switch to the front elevation view. And there are controls that I can use to drag the top and bottom. So I'll drag the top up to our top reference plane. And then when I do, we see another padlock icon, so I'll lock it. And our bottom, the bottom of the extrusion is where we want it to, but it's not constrained. And so I'm going to click the control, drag it up, and then back down, and then lock it and then I'll deselect the extrusion. And if I switch to the 3D view, I can orbit around and you can see our parametric cube that we have right now. And the next thing we want to do is add an electrical connector. So on the Create ribbon in the Connectors panel, I'll click Electrical Connector. And then in the Placement panel, I'll make sure Place on Face is selected and then I will select a side face. If, you, if the one you want is not highlighting, you can press tab and then click to select it. And then I'll click modify to end the command. We'll leave that there uh, at, on the side and we'll leave it centered in the face. And then we'll open the family types dialog one more time and to wrap up, we are going to do what's called flexing our family, which is adjusting the parameter values and making sure that everything adjusts accordingly, making sure that our geometry is constrained appropriately, and it appears everything's working like we want it to. And so we now have the start of an electrical equipment family. And so just to summarize, best practices are to create your reference planes to define the framework of the family, and then add dimensions to control those reference planes, and then label the dimensions with parameters and then constrain the geometry to the reference planes.